I have lived in some places where uh, cockroaches uh, have thrived and very, very hard to get rid of. Uh, but they're, they're, they're nocturnal creatures, I suppose, so I guess during the day maybe they kind of turn their brain off and uh, turn it on again uh, when it gets dark. I don't know. Don't ask me. But these are clever biologists that have worked all this out, and uh, like I say, they haven't got very much to do, have they? Let's uh, take a call. We've got Don on the line from Villawood. Hello, Don. Hello there, Frank. How are you going? Yeah, good. Thank you, Don. That's good. Uh, in regards to cockroaches... Uh uh, I think they're one of the creatures that can survive a nuclear attack. Huh? I've, I've, I've often heard that, yes. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, and I do believe uh, they're a delicacy with, uh, you know, dipped in chocolate in China. Yeah, yeah I've heard that too. Um, I, I remember reading something. It might have been King Rat, the uh, the book about uh, um, life in Changi during World War Two. It was a novel oh, right. uh, where apparently they are, they are full of protein and if you're really hard up uh, like they were in the... Uh, in the prison camp, they could, uh, you know, eat the odd cockroach. Oh, sounds, we, sounds pretty awful, but... You know, Weary Dunlop was... Uh, was that where Weary Dunlop was? Uh, yeah, Weary Dunlop was there, yes. Yeah, he was a great Australian. Oh, was he ever? And a few yeah. tacos on him, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, your, your, your comments there about uh, bright lights in the skies, and I yeah. think called is... Uh, I was flicking through uh, the news services uh, was last Thursday and I uh, happened to see just right at the end of the bulletin on Channel 7, that Roscoe. Oh, yeah. I mean, in the background, they've uh, you know, they've got a live shot of uh, uh, the Sydney uh, skyline and right. a little white light going across uh, Roscoe's head. Uh, what, moving across, was it? Yeah. I oh, wonder, wonder what that was. Uh, but, uh, but, but, Might have been a glow worm or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I prefer Lincoln, Frank. I'm, I'm yeah. Miracles of the old Foxtel IQ, I found the footage. <laughs> I might upload it to YouTube. But, yeah. Spring did its best interpretation of summer today, with temperatures 5 to 8 degrees up on normal. Dry westerly winds swept across Sydney earlier than expected, and that pushed tops into the high 20s fairly late this afternoon. The city peaked at 28 degrees after 3 o'clock. Right now it's 21. Overnight cloud trapped in the heat, delivering warm lows of 10 to 12 in most suburbs. 15 along coastal parts. 28 degrees was the average maximum, but it was a touch cooler in Richmond, Terry Hills, Cronulla and Campbelltown. From the satellite, this trough swept through Sydney very early this morning with little impact, less than a millimetre of rain, but it hit hard in Brisbane with severe storms and seven centimetre hail reported just south of the city. The next frontal system, uh, now pushing across the southeast, will extend a trough into New South Wales, helping to direct fresh and gusty nor'westerlies across the state, quite strong in alpine areas tonight. That front will bring a few showers to Hobart, Melbourne and Adelaide, with wintry tops in the mid-teens. Cloudy in Canberra, 18 degrees. Clearing in Brisbane tonight, ahead of a dry and sunny day, 29. Perth, 22. Windy in Sydney tomorrow, up to 25 knots from the northwest, swinging west to south westerly during the evening. Water's becoming rough on a low swell. Sunrise close to 5.30. Overnight temperatures will be slightly cooler than last night, 14 in the city, 11 westwards, then dry and hot ahead of a late change. Up to 28 degrees again for most of Sydney. Cronulla 27, Terry Hills 26 and 19 in the mountains. With no rain this past week, our catchments fell slightly to 58.9% and it's a dry outlook, sunny but cool over the weekend. Saturday 21, Sunday 23, becoming warmer next week as northerly winds redevelop, pollen levels high tomorrow. Okay, thanks Sarah. And that's seven years to now. I'm Ian Ross, thanks for your company.